Hi guys, uh, this is the first video explaining tire contact patch and the side slip angle. The topic of this video is uh, what produces lateral force. La lateral force is produced by steering wheel operation uh, banked around the road, a road camber, crosswind, and the road unevenness. As usual, I prepared the uh, quiz for you. Uh, what is the correct description on uh, driving in the crosswind? Number one, tire slip angle uh, gets bigger as crosswind gets stronger. Number two, crosswind cannot produce the tire side slip angle. As before, uh, let's uh, review the side slip angle. Uh, pictures here exaggerates the deformation of a front left tire uh, turning to the right to show the clear image. We have a bottom view in the uh, left and the top view in the right. The red vertical axis uh, with the capital X is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the vehicle body. A wheel, wheel rim is heading per positive uh, lowercase x axis, uh, perpendicular to which a uh, lateral force Fy is produced. Tire is moving along a uh, V axis, perpendicular to which cornering force is produced. Uh, when the steering wheel delta is given, side slip angle alpha and the lateral force Fy is automatically produced. Uh, the difference between uh, wheel rim and tire moving axis uh, bring about the tire deformation, producing the asymmetrically distributed shear stress tau y in the lateral direction. Consequently, the resultant force integrating the shear stress is produced Pneumatic trail here, this sub x alpha behind the center of tire contact patch. As a result, the self aligning moment develops to turn the wheel to turn the wheel limb to the moving direction of tire. In summary, uh, when the steering angle is given, a tire follows the curved path uh, with wheel slip angle beta uh, with the self-aligning moment m sub z. Then let's back to the uh, main topic. What produced the uh, lateral force? Of course, the first, first one is steering wheel operation. Uh, when you turn the steering wheel, tire produces the lateral force like this. In the previous video, I explained the difference between radial ply and cross ply tire. Regardless the types of tires, the car needs the same lateral force to follow the given target path. A radial ply tire can follow the target path at a constant speed with a small steering correction. Here because it needs relatively small side slip angle to produce the same lateral force compared to the compared to that of cross ply tire on the other hand a cross ply tire needs a bigger steering angle to produce the same lateral force compared to that of radial, uh, radial tire uh, therefore the correction of a steering angle gets larger in the cross ply tire than in the radial tire. The second one is the drive on the banked around road. The banked around road have the lateral slope with the higher outside the end and the lower inside the end to help the vehicle traveling on the curved path. When the radius of road path is R and the banking angle is theta, 
we have a centripetal force component m v square divided by r cosine theta and the weight component mg sine theta along the lateral line of road surface. If the centripetal force component is bigger than the weight component, side slip angle is produced outward, outward uh, which is case 1. If the centripetal force component is equal to a weight component, no side slip angle is produced. Uh, this makes the equilibrium, which is case 2. In this case, the vehicle velocity is equal to square root rg tangent theta. If the central petal force component is smaller than the weight component, side slip angle produced inwards, which is case 3, all depends on the velocity v when the banking angle theta fixed because everything is predetermined except for the velocity. The explanation in this picture is only valid when the lateral force of a front two tires is greater or equal to those of a rear ones. Otherwise, uh, we may have a different result. I will explain that later. The drive in the banked round road it's the same situation as the ball in the ball. If you maintain the velocity of the ball, uh, you can continuously keep the height of the ball. The size of a velocity is determined only depending on corresponding radius and the surface slope of the ball, theta. Uh, you can see this simple equation in many books of physics. As a result, the higher speed than that of equilibrium uh, makes the lateral force act along laterally inward direction, blue arrow is pointing, uh, which is uh, perpendicular to the curved path. On, on the contrary, the lower speed than that of equilibrium uh, makes the lateral force act along the laterally outward direction, the red arrow is pointing, uh, which is perpendicular to the curved path. Uh, normally, the roads have a camber for drainage. As you saw in the previous slide of round bank, the lateral slope of the road uh, makes the lateral force. Total lateral forces are all the same if the weights of vehicles are the same. However, lateral forces go different between the left and the right wheels depending on CG height of the individual vehicle. On the road with the camber, uh, the quantity of a weight transfer is added on the wheel in the laterally lower side of the road surface. As a result, a normal and the lateral force forces and the side slip angles are increasing altogether in those wheels. Uh, therefore, the wheels loaded with uh, bigger forces in the lower side contribute more to the entire vehicle behavior. The ratio of contribution is increasing as the road camber angles get higher and the CG height uh, gets higher. In the case of this picture, uh, front and the rear wrapped wheels contribute more to the entire vehicle behavior than the others do. Uh, the key factor of weight transfer is CG height uh, when the wheel track is the same. A vehicle with a higher CG height produce larger lateral force and the side slip angle compared, compared with uh, that of a lower CG height. Uh, for example, assuming two types of vehicles have the same weight, the differences between SUV and the sedan are summarized as shown here. In the case of SUV, 
has a higher CG height, a larger lateral force, larger side slip angle, and a larger correction of steering. Uh, therefore, the precision of steering of SUV is not better than that of sedan. On the other hand, sedan has a lower CG height, small lateral force, small side slip angle, and a small correction of steering. Uh, therefore, sedan is better. In the case of sedan, the precision of steering is better than that of SUV. The crosswind also generates the lateral force. The lateral force is produced in the opposite direction of the crosswind, uh, like this manner. Potholes, depressions, upheaval also produce the lateral force. The answer to the quiz is number one, tire side slip angle gets bigger as crosswind gets stronger. Here we have a summary. Lateral force is mainly produced by steering, road camber, banked round road, crosswind, and road unevenness. On the banked round roads, the direction of lateral force changes depending on the vehicle speed. The crosswind produces the lateral force in the opposite direction. Larger road camber and higher CG height makes a bigger normal and lateral force and the side slip angle. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand the upcoming videos. I explain the effect of normal force on the lateral force. Recently, I explained the difference between the radial tire and the cross ply tire on lateral force, self-aligning moment, pneumatic trail, and the string feedback. Next video will be the tire side slip part 5. In that video, I will explain the go diagram and the speed effect on lateral force. See you at next video. Goodbye, guys.